Welcome to the lesson for the DN7 assignment. We're going to get some work done. Work is defined as a force multiplied by the displacement of the object relative to the direction of that force. This would make the units newtons times meters. But instead, when we solve for work, it is expressed in units of joules. One joule is equal to one newton meter. Remembering that physics is only concerned with the initial and final state, an object that does not move or is moved back to its original location has not been displaced. It is then concluded that no work has been done. Work. In this course, we will do work three different ways. Work against gravity. That will be calculated by taking the force of gravity and multiplying it by the displacement vertically. Lifting it up, working against the force of gravity. Force of friction. We take the kinetic force of friction and multiply it by the displacement of the object. Sliding it across the surface is working against the force of friction. And the third type, is work going into accelerating the object, which means we take F net and multiply it by the displacement. By accelerating the object, we have changed its velocity. We've done work accelerating the object. Keep in mind, as we go through these examples, that in physics, work is done on an object when energy is transferred to the object. So work has been done if the object has increased in potential energy, meaning that it is now higher than it was at the beginning. Or it is traveling faster than it was at the beginning, which means it has had an increase in its kinetic energy. Or it has increased the amount of heat energy due to the grinding of friction. Gonna get some work done today. It's a good day for some work, but before I do some work, what I like to do is a little workout to get started. That's how I start my day out. A little workout. So I'm gonna grab these weights here. It's gonna mm, feel the burn, feel the burn. Alright. Ready to get down to some work. The initial velocity equals the final velocity, so there was no work put into accelerating the object. The object was not slid across any surface, so there was no work done against friction. There's also no work done against gravity because the displacement is equal to zero. Now I did work when I lifted the weight, and when I decreased the applied force, the force of gravity was larger, and the weight went back down, erasing the work that I had done. Again, force of gravity is down, the displacement is up, I am doing work against the force of gravity. When I decrease my applied force, the force of gravity is still pushing down, the displacement is down, I am erasing any work that I had accomplished. So, work going into gravity overall equals zero joules. Slow, fast. The same amount of work was done in both cases. Same object, same kinetic force of friction, same displacement. Both had equivalent work put into friction. The second example was faster, but in the end, the velocities were the same, both equal to zero meters per second, which is the same as the initial velocities in both cases. So, in both cases, in the end, no work was put into accelerating the object. No work went into acceleration because the final velocity of the object equals the object's initial velocity. No work went into gravity since the object is returned to its original height. And no work went into friction because the object had been lifted, not dragged across the surface. So in the end, no work has been accomplished. No work 
went into acceleration as the initial and final velocities are the same, and no work went into gravity as the object remains at the same height. But work went into friction. What? Work went into friction? But the displacement is equal to zero. How is this possible? Remember, in the example with the weights, when the weights are going down, gravity is not opposing the movement. In this example, friction always opposes the direction of the object. So work has gone into friction even though the overall displacement is zero. In work, when it comes to friction, it is actually the distance covered multiplied by the force of kinetic friction. Remember that we said in physics, work is done on an object when energy is transferred to that object. Friction causes heat and the bottom of the container of gel, even though the displacement is zero, the bottom of the container of gel is probably smoking hot after all that work that has just been accomplished. Imagine, if I push the object in a circular path, the total work is the sum of an infinite number of calculations due to the fact that the direction of the object is constantly changing on its trip, and so too is the direction of the kinetic force of friction that we are working against. To determine the amount of work in this scenario, we would have to calculate work by multiplying the kinetic force of friction by the distance traveled by the object. Again, initial velocity equals final velocity, so no work went into acceleration. The object did not slide across the surface, so no work went into friction, but the object has been elevated to a new height, so there was work done against gravity. No work went into gravity because the object had not been elevated, but work went into friction because the object was slid across the surface, and work went into acceleration because the object was going faster as it left my hand than it was initially traveling. No work went into accelerating the object since the final velocity equals the initial velocity. But work did go into friction because the object had been slid up the inclined plane and work had gone into gravity because the object is higher at the end than it was at the beginning. Last thing before we get to the examples. If I place the object on an inclined plane and the angle is great enough the object slides down the plane, what work is being done? Well, there would have to be work of friction as it slides down the surface. There would have to be work acceleration as it gains speed traveling down the inclined plane. But who is doing the work? It's gravity. And the work that gravity is doing is equal to the work that goes into friction plus the work going into accelerating the object. Keep this in mind as it will surface again in a later unit. Example one, how much work is associated with pushing a loaded box 55.0 meters east with a force of 125 newtons east? So the box, has been displaced 55.0 meters east. We know there's a force of gravity pushing down, normal force pushing up. There's an applied force of 125 newtons east and some sort of friction working against it. So the force applied is 125 newtons east. Now we don't know if that's going all into accelerating the box, if it's going into friction. We're not exactly sure what it's going into, but we know what the force was being applied to the box. We know the displacement. So our equation is simply work is force times displacement. The force that we are applying is 125 newtons. The displacement is 55.0 meters. Work is 6,875 joules. Only three significant figures in that number. So our final answer is 6,880 joules. A force of 252 newtons is exerted on a 47.8 kilogram box at rest. If Fs for the box is 250, all right, so we got an applied force of 252, static force of friction of 250 newtons, 
that means unfortunately the box is moving. And I say unfortunately because if the box was not moving, there would be no work done and this question would be much easier. So the box is in fact moving. We'll put in a coordinate cross. We'll make east the direction of the box for the box is moving east. Gravity is pushing down on the box. Normal force is pushing up. We've got an applied force of 252 newtons east and a kinetic force of friction equal to 227 newtons west. Before we move on, we should switch that so it is east as well. So FK is going to be equal to negative 227 newtons in the east direction. And we'll add that to our variable list. Now, what else have we been given information wise? The initial velocity is zero because it is starting at rest. The mass of the box is 47.8 kilograms. And the time is 3.0 seconds. Work equals force multiplied by displacement. And we've been given the force. We're told that the force applied by the person is 252 newtons. But we have a problem because we do not know what the displacement is. So before we move on, we're going to have to find displacement. And there is no easy way to do that with what we've been given. We have not been given enough information. But we have been given a lot of forces. And maybe we can find acceleration through those forces. We know that the force of gravity and normal force will factor out. So the net force is going to be the force applied plus the force of kinetic friction. We can substitute those values in. And that gives us a net force of 25 newtons east. And we know that net force also equals mass times acceleration. So if I want to solve for acceleration, I will divide both sides by mass. The mass is factor out. Acceleration equals F net divided by mass. I can sub in that F net of 25 newtons east divided by the mass of 47.8 kilograms. And we have an acceleration of 0 0.5230 meters per second squared east, which we can add then to our variable list. Now that I have initial velocity, time, acceleration, I can find displacement. I'm going to find displacement by using d equals vit plus half at squared. And since the initial velocity is equal to zero, zero multiplied by time equals zero, and zero plus half at squared just equals half at squared. So our formula has been simplified to displacement equals half at squared. Now I can sub in numbers and solve for the displacement. So displacement equals half times the acceleration of 0 0.5230 meters per second squared multiplied by the time of 3.0 seconds squared. So the displacement of the box over the three second time period is 2.3535 meters east. And we can change our variable list where displacement says a question mark to 2.3535 meters east. Now I can get back to that work equals force times displacement. As mentioned, the force that we are applying is 252 newtons. The displacement is 2.3535 meters. When we punch that in, that gives us 593.01 joules. Corrected to two significant figures, the work done equals 590 joules. Example three, a 350 Newton east force is exerted on a box that has a 370 Newton static frictional force for a total of 30.0 seconds. How much work was done? So the applied force is 350 Newtons east. Static frictional force is 370 Newtons west. Our coordinate cross would have up is up, down is down. Box being pushed towards the east. Gravity pushes down. Normal force pushes up. Equal and opposite, so they cancel out. Applied force of 350 newtons east. Static frictional force of 370 newtons west, which is negative 370 newtons east. And it appears as though this person did not push hard enough to break the static force of friction, so therefore the box did not move. So the displacement is zero. And since work equals force times displacement, 
If displacement is zero, work is zero. So zero joules of work have been accomplished. Please make this note in your notes. The static force of friction was not overcome. No work was done because displacement over the 30.0 seconds is zero meters. A 4.5 kilogram box is resting on the ground. In our variable list, let's put down the mass. 4.5 kilograms. If lifted and held 2.5 meters off the ground, how much work is done? So the box is lifted 2.5 meters. So displacement is 2.5 meters up. Force of gravity is pushing down. The applied force lifted the box up. We're doing work against the force of gravity. So work gravity equals Fg multiplied by the displacement vertically. Fg is equal to mass times gravity. So we will sub in Mg for Fg. We know the mass, we know gravity, and we know the vertical displacement. So we will sub our numbers in. 4.5 kilograms is multiplied by 9.80 meters per second squared multiplied by 2.5 meters gives us 110.25 joules. Rounding to two significant figures, our answer for example four is 110 joules. Example five, we have a 14.0 kilogram box that is sitting on the floor. It's gonna be pushed 2.3 meters across a flat surface, and then it's lifted 0.72 meters into the back of an automobile. And we wanna know how much work has been done. We know the mass is 14.0 kilograms. We're given a displacement of 2.3 meters in the positive direction, but this is actually a two-part process. And the 2.3 meters relates to the first part of this process. So in part one, displacement is, is 2.3 meters in the positive direction. That means we also have a part two, which was the lifting into the back of the truck. We're told the US value is 0.43, which is not usable, but we're told that the UK value is 0.41, and that is going to apply to part one of this two-part problem. We're told it's lifted 0.72 meters into the back of the truck. That has to do with part two of the process, as it was lifted 0.72 meters up and put into the truck. So for our calculations, we can calculate the work of friction in part one, which was FK multiplied by D. We substitute in UKMG cos theta for FK. We know everything that goes into that formula so we can solve for the work done against friction. UK is 0.41, mass 14.0 kilograms, gravity 9.80 meters per second squared, Cos of zero because it is being pushed along a flat surface and it was pushed a distance of 2.3 meters. So work that went into friction is 129.38 joules. In part two, there was work done against gravity and work gravity equals FGD and FG is equal to mass times gravity. So we will substitute that in for FG. And we know the mass, gravity, and the vertical displacement, so we'll sub those in. 14.0 kilograms multiplied by 9.80 meters per second squared multiplied by 0.72 meters. The work that went into gravity is 98.78 joules. So we'll add those up to get work total. And that gives us 228.16 joules. Again, I'm going to line it up in columns because I'm adding. And work friction runs out of significant figures first as I move left to right. Work friction runs out after the two. So I will draw a round off line after the two and work friction. And I wind up with two significant figures. So 228.16 joules becomes 230 joules. Example six, Mr. Dunville pulls a 32.2 kilogram Lorne on her 2.4 kilogram sleigh up a hill. So he is pulling 32.2 kilograms added to 2.4 kilograms. So the total mass that he is doing work on would be 34.6 kilograms. 
We're told the hill is 32 degrees from the horizontal. If Lorne is pulled from rest, so that's our initial velocity of 0 meters per second, to a speed of 2.3 meters per second, so that will be our final velocity, over 37.3 meters, so that is the displacement going up the hill on a 32 degree angle. How much work was accomplished by Mr. Dunville? Uh, we don't know acceleration, we don't know time. We want to complete our force diagram, so the force of gravity is pushing down. We have an applied force by Mr. Dunville. Working against him would be a kinetic force of friction, and we have the normal force that is pushing back up on the box. There are three different works that are being done. Friction, because it's being slid up the hill. There's gravity, because the box is now higher than it was at the beginning. And we also have acceleration, because the box went from zero to 2.3 meters per second. The first thing we're gonna solve for is the work that went into accelerating the box. So work acceleration equals F net times D. We have to do a substitution, F net equals mass times acceleration. So work acceleration equals MAD. Uh, and we said we don't know acceleration, so that's gonna be a problem. We're gonna to have to solve for acceleration before we move on. When we look at our kinematics formulas, and there is always more than one way to accomplish this, but the route I'm gonna take is using VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. We said the initial velocity is zero. So zero squared plus 2AD gives us just 2AD. So our equation has been simplified to VF squared equals 2AD. I want to get acceleration by itself, so I will divide both sides by 2D. Now the 2D and the 2D on the right-hand side will factor out. And now I have acceleration equal to VF squared divided by 2D. We'll substitute our numbers in. So acceleration is 2.3 squared divided by 2 multiplied by 37.3. Make sure you double bracket the bottom, otherwise your calculator will think that 37.3 was supposed to be in the numerator. You will know you entered it correctly if you get an acceleration of 0.070912 meters per second squared. Now I can go back up to that equation and substitute in the acceleration I found. So the mass is 34.6. The acceleration we found is 0.070912 meters per second squared. And the acceleration happened over the entire displacement over that slope, which was 37.3 meters. So work done accelerating the object comes to 91.5 joules. Pause and copy this down now before we move on to calculate the other work that was done in this scenario. Now that we have established how much work was done accelerating the object, let's calculate how much work was done lifting the object. So that is work done against gravity. And that is equal to Fg multiplied by displacement vertically. Fg is equal to mg, so I will substitute that in. So work against gravity is equal to mgd, displacement being vertically. And since it's vertically, that means it isn't over 37.3 meters. The object was not lifted 37.3 meters into the air. That means I'll have to find how long the side is opposite to the 32 degrees, because that is the displacement vertically. And that works out to 37.3 sine 32 degrees. That's because the hypotenuse is 37.3 meters. The angle I was given is 32. And the side where the displacement against gravity happened is opposite to that angle. So that's why I'm using sine. Now I can sub those numbers in. Mass is 34.6 kilograms. Gravity is 9.80 meters per second squared. And the displacement vertically is 37.3 sine 32 meters. I punched that into my calculator. And the work done against gravity comes to 6,702.3 joules. Now let's establish how much work was done against friction. So work friction is equal to Fk multiplied by D. 
and FK is equal to UK MG cos theta. Now I don't have a UK value, so I will have to reference my data table. When I go to the data table, I'm going to have to use what makes the most sense for our scenario. I would say that's probably waxed wood on dry snow and a UK value of 0.41. Now the displacement happened over 37.3 meters because that box was grinded along that slope a total of 37.3 meters. So we can sub those numbers in. UK equals 0.41, mass is 34.6 kilograms, gravity is 9.80 meters per second squared, coasts of 32.0 degrees because it is not on a flat surface, and the displacement is 37.3 meters. Punch that in our calculator and we get a total of 4,397.6 joules. So that's the work going into friction. So how much work did Mr. Dunville do? Well, we're going to have to add these all up to find out what the total amount of work is that Mr. Dunville has done here. When I add those up, that gives me 11,191.5 joules. I line them up all nice and neat so I can correct for significant figures. As I move left to right, it's work friction that runs out of significant figures first. It runs out after the three. So I will draw a round off line between the tens and hundreds spot. And I wind up with a final answer of 11,200 joules. Woo! -ee! A truck has broken down on its way to Hokey Country Festorama, and the e brake is locked. To get to the show on time, the truck is pulled 524 meters down a gravel road with a massive roll of tine. The tine attached to the bumper is making an angle 22.4 degrees from the horizontal, and it's being pulled with 437 newtons of force. Woo! -ee! How much work is being done to get to the big show? All right, then. So the truck is being pulled 524 meters in the positive direction. But not all force is being applied in the positive direction. The time is being pulled in the positive direction and up at the same time. So that means only some of this force is actually doing work. The person is pulling in the positive direction that is doing work because that is the direction of the displacement. The person who's pulling the truck is also pulling up and that is not doing any work because the truck is not moving up nor is it moving down. There is no displacement in the vertical axis. So the side that is doing work is the horizontal side. And if 437 newtons is our hypotenuse, 22.4 degrees is the angle we have been given. That means the horizontal side is equal to 437 cos 22.4 degrees newtons. So force in the horizontal equals 427 cos 22.4 degrees newtons in the positive direction. Work equals force times displacement. In this case, that's 427 cos 22.4 degrees newtons multiplied by 524 meters. That gives us 206,855 joules. Corrected to three significant figures. That's 207,000 joules. Woo-wee! Really want to see that show! And that's it. You guys can start on the DN7 assignment. You can start working on that. Uh, I hope you don't encounter any problems and that everything works out.